Okay, I want to read a passage from Ecclesiastes starting at 1 6 through 1 10. And this is uh, going to be a video based on the second blood moon of the four and the uh, lunar eclipse tetrad. Uh, and this is actually the last blood moon of the year. And the other two will culminate in 2015. Now, <clears throat> And um, and the reason why I'm bringing this up is because, you know, especially with the plague, you know, the Ebola virus and these types of things going around, and with all the events that have been shaping up in the last week, it's been a very <laughs> eventful week by far. Um, we read quotes such as George Santiana, which quoted, which was famous for the... Uh, Quote, those who cannot remember, remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And what does this have to do with the blood moons? Well, we're going to look at that um, here in just a moment. But I want to take you to Ecclesiastes 1 6 through 1 10, which kind of mirrors what George Santiana said of those who do not learn from the past are condemned to repeat it. <clears throat> Starting verse 6 in Ecclesiastes 1. The wind goeth toward the south, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Unto the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. The thing that hath been... It is that which shall be, and that which is done is that which shall be done, and there is no new thing under the sun. Is there anything whereof it may be said, See, this is new? It hath been already of old time, which was before us. Okay. I came across this Facebook post entitled, Red Moon Rapture. Okay, now I'm I'm not uh, I'm not a supporter of the Rapture, you know. So I'm going to remain neutral on that on, on that subject. This is not what this is about. But the author of this page here uh, did some digging and found some very interesting things. Okay, and I'm going to go over this with you. But before I do, I'm going to play you this video from Dabu Seven. Basically explains when the Blood Moon is going to happen and who's and how it's going to be viewed. Now, if you notice carefully, the dark shaded area is where this is the Blood Moon is not going to be visible, which is basically the Middle Eastern region, Africa, the you know parts of Russia. Um, it'll be mainly visible in a lot of your Western um, nations, such as Australia. Uh, pretty much all of the U.S., uh, you know, and these types of things. So basically, your Western, um, your your Western nations, if you like, except maybe for the fact of the U.K. and Ireland and these types of things. So, um, but uh, <sighs> the thing is, is that um. It's very interesting because it is the Western Church that is, I believe personally, the most lukewarm. It is the Western Church that has had all these doctrines creep in that you see making so much money these days. It is the Western Church who is basically main, also mainly in America, which has followed suit into a 501c3 status, which is basically yoked up with the government of the U.S., which in turn is essentially, you know, I have to go into it in another video, the beast that rises up out of the earth, which makes an image to the beast, which is Rome. Okay. Um, so that is very interesting when it comes to the aspect of where this blood moon is going to be visible and the other two as well is mainly going to be visible in the western part of the world. So... What do we have here? Well, let me go into this. 
um, this is the the Facebook post which is not as long but I'm gonna go into the actual web page which goes into the history of a tetrad that occurred in the second century AD which was very very interesting so let's go ahead and go over this and I'm just gonna read this straight out the Ebola virus outbreak began only a few days after comet Ison and those who remember Ison was vaporized by the Sun on November 28 2013 the Jewish holiday of Hanukkah Ison translated in Hebrew means disaster the current 2014 2015 Jewish blood moons are displaying very disturbing parallels to the first Jewish blood moons in 162 AD and 163 AD King Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes 1 9 that which has been is what will be that which is done is what will be done there is nothing new under the Sun Jesus also warned in Matthew 24 just as it was in the days of Noah so shall it be when the Son of Man comes blood moon history is repeating itself the outbreak of the Ebola virus during the 2014 2015 Jewish blood moon lunar, lunar eclipses is a prophetic deja vu from the first Jewish blood moon lunar eclipses in 162 AD through 163 AD which saw one-third of the Roman Empire die from the Antonine plague October 3rd 2014 1800 uh, three hospitals in Dallas and Washington DC are now treating people who flew to the United States from West Africa while knowing they were infected with the Ebola virus Roman Colosseum martyrdom of Christians and Jews peaked during the first Jewish blood moons followed by the Antonine plague that dis decimated the Roman Empire killing 5 million people soon after the April 14th 2014 Jewish Passover blood moon Isis Muslim terrorists started beheading Christians in Iraq and Syria on YouTube as mentioned in the book of Revelation <clears throat> Revelation 2014 says then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded by their witness to Jesus and for the Word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had a, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years so there seems to be a lot of interesting parallels you got to remember a lot of times when you're digging for truth you know the ultimate truth is the Word of God you know I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the Father but by me is we have to look at history and history is a continuum into the present and into the future there is nothing new under the Sun okay and if we do not learn from history and I'm not talking about the phony fake history that your public schools teach and I'm talking about real deep deep history that you won't hear in your textbooks okay the where you have to dig carefully via the internet which is why a lot of the internet is being censored these days because people are starting to become aware of these things um, this is what you have to realize you have to learn from history okay now what happened in 162 and 163 AD well here's a little bit of a time chart okay on March 161 he had Marcus Aurelius I believe that's when he basically took over the Emperor Empire and on April 17th 162 on the Jewish Passover you had the first blood moon spring of 162 he had flooding and famine on October 11th 162 the Feast of Tabernacles you had the second blood moon between 161 and 180 AD is when the Colosseum martyrdom ensued you can read about that in the Fox Book of Martyrs and again April uh, let's see April 6th 163 AD Jewish Passover blood moon okay and then right after that was the Feast of Tabernacles September 30th 163 blood moon what followed after that was the Antonine plague of 165 through 180 AD a 15 year span of this plague okay so <clears throat> what do we have here well the 162 AD through 163 AD Jewish blood moon eclipses and corresponding plague took place during the historical time period of the Hollywood movie gladiator 
Released in the United States on May 5th, 2000, Gladiator was a box office success, received positive reviews, and was credited with rekindling interest in the historical epic. The film won multiple awards, notably five Academy Awards and the 73rd Academy Awards, including Best Picture and Best Actor for Russell Crowe. Christopher Harris starred in the role of Roman Emperor Marcus Aurelius, which Hollywood chose to portray as a George Washington figure who was a very good ruler. The movie was very inaccurate from a historical point of view. Fox's Book of Martyrs states that the greatest time of persecution in the Roman Empire coincided with the reign of Emperor Marcus Aurelius and the occurrence of the lunar eclipse in 162-163 AD. The truth of the matter is Emperor Marcus Aurelius was the most ruthless and brutal Roman emperors in the history of Rome. The Tiber River, which flows through the city of Rome, flooded its banks in the spring of 162 AD, killing most animals in Rome and destroying much of the city. A severe famine resulted. In 165 AD, a plague broke out which was responsible for killing one-third of the Roman Empire, including two emperors. The Antonine Plague of 165-180 through 180 AD was also known as the Plague of Galen, who described it was an ancient pandemic brought back to the Roman Empire hint, hint, by troops returning from campaigns in the Near East. The plague began shortly after the first Jewish blood moon lunar eclipse in 162-163 AD. There is a documentary called Rome's Revenge that was produced by Forerunner Chronicles. I'm going to link that documentary in the description box below to where you can watch that, where how the United States parallels the Roman Empire in so many ways. Again, there ain't nothing new under the sun. All right. You know, watch that documentary and then look at what's going on. Again, let me read this here. Again. The plague of Galen, who described it, was an ancient pandemic brought back to the Roman Empire by troops returning from campaigns in the Near East. The plague began shortly after the first Jewish blood moon lunar eclipses in 162 to 163 A.D. It has been suspected to have been either smallpox or measles, but the true cause remains undetermined. The epidemic may have claimed the life of Roman Emperor Lucius Verus, who died in 169 and was the co-regent of Marcus Aurelius Antoninus, whose family name Antoninus was given to the epidemic. The disease broke out again nine years later, according to the Roman historian Dio Cassius, and caused up to 2,000 deaths a day in Rome. One quarter of those infected. Total deaths have been estimated at 5 million. The disease killed as much as one-third of the population in some areas and devastated the Roman army. Ancient, ancient sources agree that the epidemic appeared first during the Roman siege of Seleucia in the winter of 165-166. Ammianus Mercellinus reports that the plague spread to Gaul and the legions along the Rhine. Eutropius asserts that a large population died throughout the empire. He had Passover, April 17, 162 AD, total lunar eclipse. Tabernacles, October 11, 162 AD, total lunar eclipse. Passover, April 6, 163 AD, total lunar eclipse. Tabernacles, September 30, 163 AD, total lunar eclipse. And right after that was when this plague struck. So, I'm going to play this video here real quick. Basically, show uh, Dabu here is basically going to tell you how, where this is going to be visible. And this is the last blood moon of 2014. We have two more to go. So, I hope this has been an interesting little piece. Um, so, it is something to pay attention to. Again, history does repeat itself. Am I saying it's going to be the exact same way? No, but again, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to exactly mirror what happened in Rome, but the similarities can be there. And there ain't no new thing under the sun. Learn from history, because those who don't are condemned to repeat it. Truth be told, truth be known. Stay safe. God bless. See you next time. Bye-bye. This is an update to the Blood Moon Tetrad that began this year. You were looking at where you will be able to see this event 
Unfortunately, if you're in Africa, this part of Europe, you're not going to witness this whatsoever. But the further out you go, your chances are way better. So, Eastern Australia, much of the United States, in the West Coast, uh, Western Canada, Alaska, Hawaii, they'll be able to see this perfectly. Now, the last one, like I said, took place on April 15th. And this eclipse that's coming up on October 8th will happen two days after Luna Perigee. That is when the moon is nearest to the Earth. Now, NASA says the moon will appear 5.3% larger than the previous blood moon, which occurred on April 15th. Now, like I said, this eclipse marks the second in a series of four lunar eclipses in a row, known as a tetrad. And we'll experience just eight tetrads in, in this century alone. And we won't experience the next tetrad until around 2032-2033. So, just wanted to do the update, let everybody know that maybe was not aware that we are coming up here on the second. And the one after that will be background again in April. I did happen to catch uh, some good shots of the Harvest Moon event here recently and hopefully we'll get some good images of this event coming up as well. Granted we have clear skies. I'll leave a link. Till next time it's been Dabu Seba. Eyes to the skies.